is your help sheet. Now remember, you're allowed to have one page of notes. To be honest with you, I don't know how you will feel. They get a page of notes for their test. I don't know how you will fill a page of notes. You do not have to put the tax rate on it. Your table will be given to you in the test. Right, Ben? So what you should have are your four simple interest formulas written down. What are you doing? Four simple interest formulas written down. Have you got that? Right, they're in your book. You should have it. You should have your You should have your future value, present value formula written down and of course, we can rearrange that to say that that's and I know that this was in your notes cuz I asked you to write this down. Okay? You're going to need to be able to do this by hand and by calculator, right? but definitely by hand and that's where you might have to it'll have a few more points all right or marks so definitely all of your simple interest formulas if you are going i always forget to put time in years write yourself a note you're going to have lots of space on your page of notes <laughs> seriously all right we're ready to put some of this to practice to remind ourselves how we do it i don't think the maths is going to be that difficult what will be difficult for you is sometimes how it's worded. So you need to underline the questions and go, what is it asking? Is it simple interest? Is it compound? So are we ready to rock and roll? You could go back and do if you think you need to practice. But we're looking, 6,000 is invested at, as soon as I read simple interest, right? You should be writing I equals P equals R equals T. And then you're putting your information in, yeah? And then I don't think that you could go wrong, quite frankly. Um, so we will come to that again in question three. That's going to give us a, a chance to practice simple interest, okay? And your test is going to mix it up. So here we go. This is how, if this was a test question, this is how I would do it. Feel free for others if you are wanting to add and help people. So you've got today's date. Those of you who want to have a highlighter in the test, feel free to bring it in. Okay? And we go reading, reading, reading. Compound annually. So that's the first thing I'm going to highlight, right? And then I'm going to be looking at my help sheet and I'm going to be writing down future value equals present value 1 plus i to the n because I saw compound annually. I'm also going to make sure that I'm highlighting the annually, because what does that mean? Yearly, once a year, okay? All right, find the value of his investment after three years. Now, this is again, when you're practicing and you're doing these questions, do you have to do both parts? You just practice one if you want to, one by hand, one with technology, but spread it out. All right, so we'll do A and we're gonna do it by hand. So, Alex invested $3,700. It's not that he has $3,700 in the future, is it? He's got it now. So, we're going to easily write PV equals $3,700. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Your I, what did we have to remember when we used compound interest formula? So, it was only be divided by 12 if we said it was compounded monthly, right? But we do have to change it to decimal. Like, so this is going to be 0 0.058. Now, I'm quite happy to go straight to that. If you sort of go, oh, I always get confused and I stuff up with my zero, then you're saying 5.8 divided by 100. Everybody is different. Do what works for you. Okay? As Luke said, because this is compounded annually, well, we're dividing by 1. So we don't have to do anything there. Yep. Yep. So that was, will they both be right if you write it like this or like this? Yes, correct. Okay, and our N in this case, simples. Why do you keep saying 12? They keep saying 12 to me, right? It's three years and it's annually 
So then it's just three, and I'm saying times one, but I wouldn't normally write three times one. I'm just saying that because some of you are, are chucking in 12 all the time. <laughs> okay, again, if that was compounded monthly, then yes, interest divides by 12, and I'd say three times 12 here. But because it's not monthly, <laughs> and we're in normal calculator mode, So normal calculator mode, whack this in. Okay, we're not fooling around here. 3,700, 1 plus 0.058 to the 3. And we get 4,381. Yep, 0.86 because we're talking money. Do not give me more than two decimal places because then I'd be going, what are they on about? We're dealing with money, two decimals. Yeah, if it only has one decimal, put the zero after. So we're doing two decimals. Now, please, this, I'm coming, this is where you must make sure that you read the question, right? In this case, find the value of his investment after. This is the value of his investment, we're done. What would you do, wrapper, wrapper, MC, wrapper up the back, if, it, if the question said, how much interest have I earned? I was going to say, can you wrap the answer? <laughs> <laughs> if we were together for the whole year, you know, at the end of the year, I'd still be going something about wrapper. Uh, you have to take the original amount off of the in total. Perfection, okay. So if the question asked... What interest did you earn? Subtract the original amount. We happy with that? Okay, before we move on to a simple interest, we're going to see, do we get this same answer using the financial option on our calculator? So let's just remind us, how do we do that? Okay, menu, we go financial. Okay, hopefully everybody gets it. We go F2. So, we push three times one. And again, I'm saying times one, just so you know, if it was quarterly, I would say three times four. Right, what do we have to do with our interest? Absolutely nothing. Don't divide by 100. Don't divide by one or 12 or do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Okay, we just pop that in 5.8. Correct? Now, okay, coming to that. No PMT, so your PV must be negative. So we're going to go minus 3700. Enter. Your PMT is zero. Your future value is zero because that's the thing you're going to solve. Now, Luke was just saying, what's PY and CY? We said it's annually one. Okay, changes it automatically, and then we press future value. Huzzah, we get the same answer. We're good. Yeah? So it sounds like we need to do one when it's compounding quarterly or monthly or whatever, because some of you are <laughs> hanging to do that. So we'll do that. We just want to do the um, simple interest. So please look at question three. Begin. Again, let's put ourselves put ourselves in the test situation. And this is what you have to do in a moment. Put your chewing gum in the bin. Because this is review set A. There's a B coming up. So you do it under test conditions. So we read. Reading, reading, reading. Ooh, simple interest. You do not, listen very carefully, do not just go and write down your simple interest formula at this time. You have to keep reading and go, what's the question asking me? Aha, how long? So you want to go to your four in simple interest rules and you want to write down the one that says T equals, okay? And T equals I times 100 over P times R, okay? Sienna just frowned at me, right? Because she hasn't looked at her formulas very nicely because she should have PRT over 100, she should have P 
equals I times 100 over R times T. She should have R equals I times 100 over P times T and she should have T. Right? Those should be on your formula page. So because we've read how long, we've gone and we've written this down. Correct? Okay. Everyone happy? What's their I? What'd you put? Yep, 2,760. Your principal is what you have now, 9,600. Your interest rate now, five and three quarters. Oh, believe it or not, this stumps people when they're putting in their calculator. So, personally, I know that three quarters is what as a decimal? 7.5. Point seven. Oh, point seven five, sorry. What did I say? No, it's alright. Sometimes I don't listen to what I say. Okay, so this just becomes 2760 times 100 all over 9600 times 5.75. Pardon? Why is this one not zero point? Because, so great question, because this has got the divide by 100 here in the formula. Okay, so that was one of the things that you had to remember. When you're doing simple interest, don't divide by 100 because it's in the formula already. Is that okay? We've stuck with the formulas that you were given in year nine. Your textbook changes them around a little bit, but I just thought, why, why change? Let's stick with. So, pop it in. Um, I don't even know what you said. I'm just going uh, Macy. Macy for somebody else, isn't it? I was really confused because the answer was the middle. And um, I thought that's how much money they have. Well, that's the... Uh, yes, well, Macy, Macy, you do need to make sure that you are yeah. understanding, not just punching numbers in, yeah. you're checking. Now, five years, yeah? Pretty simple? Okay. Can I ask you this? What happens if we had that same sort of question we're asking you, how long did it take for $10,000 to end up being $12,000? What's your principal here? Your principal is 10000 What's your interest? Yeah, but it does. Thank you. So invested $10,000, but you ended up with 12,000. It's not saying 12,000 is the interest. Remember, what you put in and what you end up with, the difference is your interest. And normally, we have more interest, unless you're in Germany. It goes negative. I'm still amazed by that. So can you please make sure, people, that you read the question carefully? Don't just skim it and go, oh, I'll just take this number and I'll take the lower number and whatever. Make sure you read the question. We we? Excellent. All right, onward. So, A, calculate the annualized rate. Who can remember how to do this? This would be like a one mark, but it's not a one mark that you want to give away. Read, it's on the, what is the question? C, read it. No. Nope. So lucky we went through this. I wouldn't have bothered. I would have thought, wow, this is just a gimme. We did this last week. They know it. So into financial we go. Anyone? You want conversion. So you've got to press F5. Anyone? What's the N going to be? Thank you. The I, 5.75, and we press effective, so 5.9. Okay, so that just becomes 5.9. Hey, while we're here, let's just do the other so we can answer part B. So we exit. What will we do for bank B? Go, honey, Lily, go. Tell me.
खोर लें So N, because it's quarterly, will go four. Please, please get with it, okay? Otherwise, less work you have to do after school. You, not after school, at home. I mean, you be. Come on. Love you. I'm not. It's alright. I'm just saying. Let's go. Six point one four. Pip. How are we going to do A? What does half yearly mean? Two. How many times do you get interest if it's half yearly? So that will be two. So you go exit, two, and you put 6.1, effective 6.19. Okay, which bank should Val choose? Y bank C. So let's have a look. Val receives a superannuation payment when she retires. She checks a number of banks and finds the following rates for investment. Now, when we're investing, we want bring them back because then I'll be sorry. Thanks. So we are going to want bank A because we want the highest interest because we're getting money. If Val was borrowing money, well, then we would go the Lowest, but you've got to read the question. We okay with that? What are we highlighting? No. What should you be highlighting? I would say you are highlighting this compounded quarterly. Quarterly. Right. We've got the six thousand dollars. Yep, six years. All right. So we are going to do part A, the future value of the investment. We're going to do it by hand. We're going to do it by calculator. Let's go. And something else? Oops. All right. Shh. So, what is my PV? 6,000. Excellent. What is my I? Sorry? It is 5.2, but what do we have to do to that? So you're going to go 5.2, you're going to divide it by 100, right? So we've got 0 0.052, but then you also have to divide it by 4. Why? Yeah, you tell me why. What did we highlight? Yeah, if it was compounded monthly, we'd divide it by 12. Correct? And N is 6 times 4. So, I like this. Okay, interest. Subtract what you originally invested. There is a nasty bug going around that's not COVID. Oh, that's worse, you poor thing. Oh, you poor thing. Okay, let's finish this off so you can go on and do what you need to do. Thank you, this way. Still waiting for people to look and listen. So part B, the interest earned on the investment. So hopefully we know that by now. It's what you end up with minus what you invested, agreed. So here's my interest, 2,180. But now you have to work out, this is the extra bit I've added, 
if Yana had a salary of $80,000, how much tax will she pay on her investment? So she's got $80,000 plus the two. So what tax bracket is she in now? Pippa, looking this way, please. It's on the board. Jack, looking this way. So 80,000 plus her two, what tax bracket is she now in? One, two, three, right, excellent. So she's in this one. So now, well, I'm just looking at this one on the board, okay? So that means she has to pay 37 cents. So what do we do? How much tax will she pay? Excellent, 2,180.46 times 0 0.37 and that's how much tax she has. Last lesson, we looked at what then is your after tax return? Can I finish this first and then we'll get to it? Right, so we go 2180. 0.46 times 0 0.37, 808.77, that's how much tax they had to pay. So you get your bank and you go, oh, goody, 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 I've got 2,180 bucks, party town, I could buy a couple of vacuum cleaners for that. It is 806, I need my glasses on, right, 806. But you go, oh, I can't buy two vacuum cleaners because I have to pay $806 in tax. So how much is my actual after-tax return? How would I work that out? Correct, 2,180.46 minus your 806.77, right? That would be your after. Just get used to that terminology. Hello, Amy. So I'm talking about this at the moment. Amy, if it's not a question about this, hold it for a minute, please. Yep. Um, why the, uh, tax gone the so technically the, the question was how come the tax hadn't gone the whole 80000 So remember we talked about that the other day when we were talking about how you actually calculate tax? This question. Can I tell you the answer? You want to listen? This question, if you read the question, is saying how much tax does he pay on the interest? So we're not worried about his whole income. The only thing the income is telling us is what tax bracket he's put into. Okay? So make sure you read the question. There will be questions where you actually have to work out the present value. So you are given what you have in the future. Oh, hello, Promethea man. Yeah, that was a good one. Right, you will have to use this formula here. Where can you get practice on that? Well, you can sort of go and suss the reviews or go back in your textbook. It's a beautiful thing. And oh, go to where the compound interest stuff was. Is it here? <gasps> this is your PMT, here it is, Helena, oh Helena, how much does she need to deposit now? This is just using your calculator stuff. So have a look at those, go back, it's all there, I'm not going to go through it with on the board because you guys seem to be doing your own thing uh, and there's some more questions here but make sure you go back and you do the practice, that's the only way that you're going to be able to pass that test on Thursday. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Practice makes perfect. Thank you. Come on in.